And today I want to take um, the opportunity to lay a foundation. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of 2 Kings. Once again, I want to start today a teaching dealing with uh, manifesting the promises, the promises of God. Uh, I use the word manifesting because to manifest is to reveal or to cause something that is not seen but there to be seen. That's what it means to manifest. Manifesting is revealing something or pulling the cover off or, off of, or causing something that is covered to be revealed. It's already there, you just can't see it. So when you manifest it, manifesting is causing it to come forth, to, to, to bring it out of the um, concealment, to cause it to be seen so that everybody can see exactly what it is. But it was always there. So we're talking about manifesting the promises, causing what God has already done, but I cannot see it, to be revealed or shown or to come forth in my life. Manifest, causing what is already there to be revealed. Let me give you an example of the direction that we want to go in. Salvation. Salvation has been provided for everybody. Everybody here that is saved right now has par, uh, partook or you have grabbed a hold of something that had already been provided. So if you got saved in 2000, 2000 wasn't the um, beginning of salvation. There were people who had been getting saved way before 2000. All right. You just happened to come in contact or get the understanding of whatever uh, 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 whatever method it came to you, whether somebody preached it or you read it or you heard it on the radio or how you came in contact with the gospel. But this gospel has been saving people way before 2000. Way before. But that just may be the time when you came in contact with it. And so when you came in contact with the gospel, it saved you. It changed your life. It caused you to be transformed from darkness into light. That was the time, the moment when you became a child of God, even though many people had become a child of God way before that. But that was when it was manifested in your life. So what we're dealing with, we're talking about something that God has already done. God has already made it available. It's already there. But it is manifested to the individual based on their faith. Based on your faith, what has already been provided will be manifested or given to you. And so faith then becomes the connection between what has been laid up for you and you seeing that thing manifest in your life. Because what good is it to have something laid up for me if I never get it? Right. And everything, understand this, that God has laid up for you, you want to use that now because once you get to heaven, you're not going to need it. You're not going to need healing in heaven. You're not going to need peace in heaven. You're not going to need joy in heaven. You're not going to need prosperity in heaven. None of these what you need in heaven because these things in heaven are abundantly supplied. You don't need these. You need it here. And so the issue is manifesting what God has laid up for me here. Okay, come on. Let's go to 2 Kings. I'm going to lay this foundation today. And um, uh, uh, my job, my job today this first part is to get you to see, get you to understand that there is more to it than what you see. That's, that's what I want to build in your spirit today. That, that's, the, that's what I want you to leave here with today. That there is more to life, there is more to reality 
than what you see with your natural eyes. That's the foundation. That's something that you have to understand. Because in order for you to grab a hold of it, you have to know that it's there. That's very important. You have to know that it's there in order for you to lay hold of it. Because if you don't know that it's there, then you will never lay hold of what has been made available. Okay, come on. Second Kings, we're going to take a look at uh, Isaiah, I mean uh, Elijah. Sorry about that. And um, go down to chapter 6, verse number 18. We'll just pull a little part of this story out where uh, Elijah's being chased. They're trying to kill him because he's preaching the gospel. He's preaching the word of God. He's a prophet of God. God is using him to bring correction to the people. The king does not like it, so they're trying to kill him. He's running. Him and his servant, they're running. Uh, the king is going from place to place trying to catch him so that he can kill him. While he was sleeping, while him and his servant were sleeping, the army came and surrounded them. Came and surrounded them. So when they get up in the morning and the servant comes out, that's what he sees. He sees a great army that had surrounded him and his master while they were sleeping. So verse number 18, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a great host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, we're going to start right there. Elijah's answer to the man. The man gets up, he walks out there, and all he sees is his enemies surrounding him on every side. There is nowhere to run. There is nowhere to escape to. He looks at what he sees. He is overwhelmed by what he sees, and he says to the master, or he says to Elijah, he says, how are we going to do or How are we going to survive? How are we going to live through this? How can we survive this? How can we make it through this? How can uh, 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 we deal with so great an army? Now, we can bring this down and make it to our everyday situation. You may get a doctor's report, and your response is, how in the world am I going to deal with what the doctor just told me? Uh, you may get a bill, and you may say, how in the world am I going to deal with this bill that I just got? How am I going to deal with this situation? I just found out some news about my children. How Right? Yes. 
He, he, he stops talking to the servant. He starts talking to the father, to God. He says, Father, I pray that you open his eyes. Now listen, his natural eyes were already open. That's how he was able to see the people out there. He was not blind naturally. He was not blind naturally. He had the ability to see. That's how he knew what was out there. He saw them. But there was another level of sight that he did not have access to, that Elijah had access to. And so Elijah says, Father, I pray that you will open his eyes. Or Father, allow him to see what I can see. <laughs> because how you respond to your problem depends on what you see. Yeah, how you respond, how you respond, how you deal with it, how you feel about it, how you think about it, what you say about it, it depends on what you see. That's why he says, open his eyes. Because he's looking wrong. His, his, his vision is off. Well, He sees his problem greater than you. So I need you to open his eyes and recalibrate, if you will, his sight. So that he can see the reality of our condition. Amen. Now, God opens his eyes as the man of God prayed. And when he opens his eyes, the Bible says that he looked and saw horses and chariots of fire all around them. All around them. All around and he realized that the army that was with him was much greater than the army that was against him. Yes. And so when he realized that, all of the fear and the anxiety went away. When his eyesight changed, when his vision changed, when, his, when, when the way he looked at things changed, he, all the anxiety went away. All fear. It went away because he realized that greater is the one that is with us than the one that is against us. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to take away is the reality that there is more to it than what you see. All right. There is more to it than what you see. You are looking at life from a natural standpoint. God is asking you to elevate your vision, elevate your sight, and begin look at life not from your natural conditions but from what the word of God says about your life the word of God reveals your reality let me take you let me take you somewhere let's go to 2nd Corinthians go to 2nd Corinthians the 4th chapter I believe Okay, go down to verse number 18. I'm going to pull verse number 18 out. We're still trying to build this. I'm building, I'm building the foundation. There's more to it than what you see. There's more to it than what you see. Go down to verse number 18. Matter of fact, let's go to verse number 16. We we'll start in verse number 16. 2 Corinthians 4 chapter, verse number 16. It says, for this cause we faint not. We don't give up. Faint not means to not give up. Mm -hmm. For this reason we faint not. But though our outward man perish, though my natural man is going through some stuff, he says, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. day, by day. Thank you, Jesus. He says, though my outward man, I, I got pressure on every side, I got stress on every side, I got battles over here, fires over there, temptations over here, I got friends that are really enemies, I got all kinds of stuff that I'm dealing with every day. He says, my natural man is being tried every day, every day of my life he's going through. He says, but my inward man is being renewed every day. Amen. My natural man is perishing. He's being tried. He's being tested. He's Strengthened 
get not. That's why we don't get weary and well doing. Every day, he's touching me. Every day, he's strengthening me. Every day, he's refreshing me. Listen, he says, on the outward, I'm perishing. Mm -hmm. I got troubles. I got bills. I got relationships. I got stress. I got all kinds of stuff that I'm dealing with every day. When I wake up in the morning, it's waiting for me. It's waiting for me when I wake up in the morning. My day is already mapped out of what I got to do. I'm, I wake up, hit, I hit the ground running. My natural man has been tested. He's been tried. He's been pushed around. But he says, but my inward man, my spirit is being renewed. There's more to it. You got to shift the gear. You got to shift. You got to change. There's more to it than what you see. Right. He says here, for the light, for our light affliction. That's what he calls what you're going through. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It's not going to last. It's not going to last. What you're going through is not going to last. What you're facing, what you're dealing with, is not going to last. What you're crying about, it's not going to last. What you're worried about, what you're stressed about, it's not going to last. It's not going to last. He says the afflictions for this moment, this is a, for a certain season, a certain amount of time, it's going to be here. But it's not going to be forever. It's a light affliction for a moment. He says it is working for us. A far more seeming and eternal weight of glory. Glory is working. What is he talking about? He's talking about what you're going through. Though it seems rough and bitter and hard to deal with, it is working. It is producing. It is causing something to be established and bring, uh, uh, to bring forth in your life. It is working something out. I said this in Sunday school. There are some things that we have to go through in order to elevate us in order to push us to the next level, in order to bring us closer to God. There are things that we must go through. I know it's not fun. I know we don't want to deal with it. But there are certain things that we go through that push us to the next level. He says, what I'm going through is, number one, it is a small or light affliction. But number two, it is a momentary affliction. And number three, he says, it's working in my behalf. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go to the book of Romans. He says, all things are working. Yes. yes. He says, this we know. He says, everything, all things, not some, all things are working for my good. Yes. Car broke down is working for my good. Trouble on the job is working for my good. Struck with my money is working for my good. Hard-headed child is working all things. All things are working for my good. Come on. Verse number 16, he says, while we look, let go of that vision again, let go of what you see again. Same thing Elijah told him, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? What you see is going to determine how you deal with it. Yes. What you see is going to determine how you deal with it. He says, while we look not at the thing. He's going to tell us what we should look at. Mm -hmm. Now, when we deal with looking in this particular place, we're not talking about to see. When we talk about looking right here, we're talking about gazing. Yes. Setting your attention, your affection on something. Uh, 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 continuously uh, worried about and pondering something. He says, while we look not at the thing that I see. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you an, another place in scripture. Uh